Hello and welcome to the Scatterbolt channel and today I just want to bring you guys a simple guide to finding the right AMD motherboard for your Ryzen PC. So if you're a first time PC builder or you're getting back into the scene and just the sheer amount of motherboard names, various numbers, various naming schemes just seem to be really overwhelming to you, then my goal by the end of this video is just to give you guys a really simple and easy choose motherboard A or choose motherboard B choice as to what AMD motherboard you should go with for a Ryzen PC build in 2025 and beyond. Because really, there's only two types of AMD motherboards you really got to be concerned about. And again, I'm going to try to simplify everything down to the bare minimum so you can make the right choice for your kind of PC build. Now I'm going to be doing that today through these two motherboards, those being the Phantom Gaming X870 Nova Wi-Fi and the B850 Pro RS, both from ASRock. So first and foremost, if you click on this video, you're probably going to build a PC using the the AM5 socket. The reason why I mention this is because you're probably gonna build a PC with either a Ryzen 7000 or Ryzen 9000 CPU, like the 7600X, 7800X 3D, or like the 9800X 3D or 9600X. Speaking of, there are newer and older AM5 motherboards and those are differentiated by the number. So here on the table, I've got two 800 series motherboards, but if you've been looking on certain retailers, you can find older motherboards that are AM5 that are 600 series motherboards like X670 and B650. These in many ways are not that much different than these motherboards right here. The only main difference being processor compatibility out of the box. Because when AMD decides to release a new CPU like the last generation Ryzen 7000 CPUs, they're gonna want motherboards that pair up with those CPUs out of the box when you first build a PC. Those being X670 and B650. But AMD are not on Ryzen 7000 anymore. They're on Ryzen 9000 and with that, they needed to introduce a whole new generation of motherboards, like the X870 and B850 motherboards that I have here. So if you wanted to build a PC that supports the latest Ryzen processors out of the box with no BIOS updates, then you're gonna to wanna to go with the latest motherboards available with an 800 series name. Now, yes, you can use an older 600 series motherboard with a newer Ryzen CPU. There's no problems in doing that. You just need to perform a BIOS update before you build your PC. And if you don't know what that is or how to do it, just go ahead and save yourself the trouble and pick up either a B850 or X870 motherboard. But now the question is, which one should you go with? First of all, there's many other different motherboard brands out there, but the ones I'm gonna be featuring in today's video are from ASRock. So here I've got the X870 Nova Wi-Fi. This is a higher end motherboard that features all of the things, like more connectivity found on the motherboard, both on the board itself and on the rear IO on the back of your PC. More PCIe lanes featured on the motherboard itself for not just graphics cards, but other PCI cards you can put onto the board. Better PCI PCI Gen 5.0 PCI Lane and M.2 SSD support found on the motherboard itself versus a cheaper motherboard. Higher end power delivery in the form of greater power phase designs featured on the motherboard itself. I'll get into that in a little bit. As well as other things like premium features like a PCI latch that'll easily let you disconnect your graphics card from this topmost slot, which is nice for really big graphics cards, as well as just having increased build quality and Wait, cause look at that rear heat shield, dude. Like, bro, this thing's gonna be able to handle the heat. Oh man, yeah, that thing's heavy. Whereas if I were to take the B850 motherboard here, let's look at the rear of this one, no heat shield. And it's uh, considerably lighter in weight. So now with the standout features for X870, who should really consider an X870 motherboard? First of all, if you are a serious content creator or professional, and you're gonna be working with a very big setup in your office or your workspace, that's going to need a lot of high speed USB ports, and you don't wanna risk it with a USB hub, you're gonna to wanna to go with X870. With these, you're gonna find the most USB connectivity and support on the rear of the motherboard, not just for type A slots, but also for type C, as well as some dedicated USB ports on the back of this that can offer fast charging as well. Surprisingly for me, this is actually quite relevant because I also have an X870 motherboard and I've got that thing stuffed to the gills on the rear IO here with all my various USB devices plugged into the back of it from my Elgato devices to my sound mixer, webcam, high speed USB flash drives, and a bunch of other things. So if you're a serious content creator or professional and you need lots of connectivity, 
we want to consider X870. Also, if you are anything close to a PC hardware enthusiast, I also got to say X870 is for you because on the topic of power phases for enhanced power delivery, these X870 motherboards feature larger and beefier 18 or even 24 power phase designs. This one here on the X870 Nova features an 18 plus two plus one power phase design, which is certainly greater than the one I have here on my right, which only features a 14 plus two plus one power phase design. My apologies, there's like a bunch of power phase designs on a bunch of these motherboards from different manufacturers, and it's really helpful when they list them out on the rear boxes of any of these motherboards. Anyways, where this comes into play is if you're an enthusiast, you probably know a thing about overclocking, and overclocking is when you shove even more voltage into your CPU than what it can handle stock, and in return, you increase the clock speeds of that CPU to achieve faster performance. And if you're an enthusiast who has a good amount of money, you're probably looking at that top of the line 16 or 12 core CPU. And if you want that overclocking flexibility, you're gonna wanna go with X870 for those increased power phase designs found on these motherboards, which usually mean they do cost more. But as you can see, the more power phases, the better for overclocking. And lastly, the last kind of person who should consider an X870 motherboard is someone who wants to find the absolute last bit of performance found in their gaming PC. So on the topic of that PCIe 5.0 lane support, if you're working with a PCIe 5.0 graphics card or SSD with ridiculous read and write speeds, with these higher end X870 motherboards, a lot of these can be found without any PCIe lane sharing. And why this matters is lane sharing essentially takes the speeds from the CPU, dilutes it across the main GPU slots and M.2 slot when you're running both of those at PCIe 5.0 on compatible 5.0 GPUs and SSDs, which is something you'll find on a lot of cheaper motherboards, but on higher end X870 motherboards, these are able to separate those lanes and not encounter any lane sharing on the topmost PCIe Express slots and the topmost M.2 SSD. So this is very much something people who have a lot of money and are gonna be spending on like the most expensive graphics card and most expensive M.2 SSD might wanna worry about. Although the good news is that this lane sharing doesn't affect gaming performance that much, but it can in certain workloads that either rely a lot on GPU bandwidth or SSD bandwidth. So once again, if you just wanted to search for that absolute last ounce of performance out of your PC, you gotta go with X870. And yes, you could probably assume that X870 and even X870E, which are essentially X870 motherboards on steroids, are even gonna be more expensive than a BA50 motherboard. But what I like specifically about this Phantom Gaming X870 Nova is that it's on a pretty good discount right now on Newegg's website. And if anything, across the whole year, this is actually one of the better, less expensive X870 motherboards on the market. So if you wanted the high-end premium features of the X870 chipset, but without that ridiculous commanding price that you may find from other brands, the X870 Nova is a good value proposition. So that's X870, but who is B850 for? Well, in a nutshell, everyone else. Let me explain. If you are a gamer, the fact is, you don't need the craziest of motherboards to get some good gaming performance out of a mid-range PC with an entry-level B850 motherboard like this. Realistically, the performance difference between this and an X870 motherboard on a game like Fortnite is going to be indistinguishable. But it's until we get to those more professional applications that rely more on the bandwidth and speeds of a motherboard are where X870 does shine a bit over B850. But that still doesn't dilute the importance of B850 because the main advantage of this is cost. So if you are just a PC gamer, and heck, if you're a PC gamer who is wanting to aspire to become a streamer or content creator and you have a limited budget, B850 is still gonna offer you a decent amount of USB connectivity, speeds, and support, enough for the majority of you watching this video. And finally, even an entry-level B850 motherboard like this is perfect for the majority of your CPUs you're probably considering for a PC like this in the first place, which is going to be a Ryzen 5 9600X, a super cheap Ryzen 5 7500F, or even a higher end 9800X 3D or 7800X 3D, because those eight core CPUs do feature some pretty good efficiency while still offering really excellent gaming performance. The wattage and power consumption of Ryzen CPUs rises dramatically when you go past eight cores with their 12 and 16 core CPUs, but for gaming, you really still don't need 
need any more than eight cores nowadays for gaming. Which still makes BA50 motherboards like the BA50 Pro RS here from ASRock great candidates for nearly all gaming PC builds, whether they're budget or mid-range ones. And really, there you have it. If you're someone who could find use in getting a more expensive X870 motherboard and utilize the full capabilities, features, and build quality of this sort of motherboard, then it's gonna do a great job. But for the rest of you, and a lot of you who are watching this video, B850 is still a very capable chipset, especially if it's a well-built one for a good price, like this ASRock one here, that's gonna satisfy all of your PC and gaming needs. So once again, if you wanna check out my favorite picks for X870 and B850 motherboards, I'll have those linked in the description down below. And to answer a few last minute questions, yes, there is a chipset above X870 called X870E. I use one on my PC, and like I said, it's just X870 on steroids with an even greater power phase design, even more connectivity, and even more craziness. But to be honest, it's for like the top 10% of PC enthusiasts who know what they're doing and completely overkill for nearly all of you watching this video. And then also there's actually some chipsets below the B850, like the A620 and B840 motherboards. However, those aren't really found on the custom DIY market that much anymore. They are harder to find. They're more reserved for those cheap pre-built PCs that are looking for the highest profit margins possible, going with the cheapest components inside the PCs themselves. And even if you find one, it's not worth getting because those cheaper 8620 and B850 boards have so many limitations on the CPU end that I just simply can't recommend them. They are just too limiting, whereas even like B850 is going to be very capable for 95% of use cases in a Ryzen PC. So there you have it. That's my quick guide for choosing the right AMD motherboard for your Ryzen PC. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scatterville Channel, signing out.